um, yeah, hope you will experience some growth throughout this full training. Um, yeah. So today we're going to look at how to craft proper CVs. And I know most of you or all of you have uh, CVs at the moment. So for this exercise, it will just be um, proofreading and approving your CV. Uh, if your CV is perfect, then good. If you feel like there's something else you can add based off of, based off of what we would we will try today, feel free to edit and improve your CV before submission. Um, so just generally, we all know a CV is something that markets who you are it's it's markets really who you are and it highlights your strong points your skills your experience the tools and platforms that you can use well um which will you're really familiar with um yeah things like that so normally basically what it highlights is your educational background just to show the hiring person or someone you want to collaborate with um, your flow of life or experience or work or yeah just a related to so it has your education your professional experience if you have the projects you've done and also your accomplishments so um the purpose of a cv in as much as is to get is for you to get an interview it's also for you to um show the people you'll be collaborating with why you why you're really good for that specific job or project so um normally especially in the current world with the whole rise of ai there are you need to write like proper tvs that could ensure it satisfies both audiences so we have the machines that are currently reviewing uh, CVs for people, especially if a company has like a lot of a lot of guys. Um, yeah, if it has a lot of guys applying for a job, uh, they tend to filter uh, the jobs just by looking at your CV and uh, it scans all the so it scans all the words in it and checks for. Um, the key points that are required for that specific role and after that it, if, if if a company doesn't have like too much applications a human can just go through it and yeah and then after if it's through a machine it starts with a machine first and then a human goes through after um so it takes an average of 10 to 30 seconds for a human to review the CV for the first time. And this is because they have a lot of CVs to go through. And um, what they're basically mostly looking at is if the highlighted skills on the job description are there on your CV. So yeah, they look at all the skills. Um, yeah, they look at the skills that you've written on your CV and then compares with uh what they're looking for and then um yeah and then they and then the other thing that on the first lookouts before actual decision on the first lookout they also tend to look at how you formatted your how you formatted your work or your document so if it's it has to be well formatted uh you you've used the right kind of fonts the size and everything um, to just look uh, very presentable in a document. So the one thing that you need to also look at when you're writing a CV is you need to show the value that you have. Um, yeah, you need to demonstrate value in your CV. So um, you could write a lot of things, but one of the things that you need to show is understand exactly your roles, from your previous company, your responsibilities that you had, the achievements that you had. And if those skills are useful to your next employer, then you need to really highlight those. So you're showing the value that you can offer to the other company. So 
Um, yeah, when we talk about value, we're talking about value could be in terms of the experience that you've had. Experience is always good. Um, it could also be an accomplishment of projects that you've done or, yeah, if you've led a project. And it could also be skills that you have that relate to that company or that job description and also your, uh, your education or your background. Um, so yeah, a good combination of your experience, accomplishments, and roles and responsibilities, um, and the value that you brought to the other company would be very essential when writing your CV. Uh, so with that, I think there's always the basic things that are always required on your CV, and that could be your name, your information, email, or address. This is basically your basic information that um, if you get the job, they can either reach out to you or contact to you. And then you could have your portfolio pages. This could be the portfolio that you created last week or your LinkedIn account. Or if you write blogs on Medium or any other platform, you can also add it there. Um, it's always optional to put a photo, uh, but not a must. Um, so yeah that's the one of the basic information that you need to have which i know you know this so um the next thing that should be there is a professional summary so this is basically just a 50 word summary of who you are what you do and tools that you're familiar with and how you can be valuable so it could be um yeah the 50 word summary should uh specify what is what track that you're in so for you guys i know it's ai for pro or project management or product management and you also need to add like relevant keywords so if you're in project management there are some tools that you never miss on your cv for example uh project management skill for example asana or um or Trello or Notion or any communication tool, one of them has to be one of them has to be there. Um, so yeah, and on that 50 word summary, this is also just not just for the humans alone, but also so for the humans, it's good for them too. It's basically like a summary of what's inside your CV, but for our if it's a machine or a bot that's scanning through your CV, they can get, they can be able to give you more points because you've you've put the keywords that it's looking for. Remember, this is something that is programmed to understand specific keywords. So if it's looking for Asana or Trello in your CV, even though you've used it before and it's not there, it could skip it because it it hasn't seen anything familiar. So you need to use the relevant keywords or the lingo that exists uh, that are very popular in your field. Um, yeah, and it should also talk about the tools that you're familiar with, the concept, and yeah, what you also want to do in your next job. Um, the other thing that you need to have is your technical skills and on the Career, careers document, we have like a, a proper checklist to ensure that you just have everything that is needed on your CV. So for the, yeah, for the, for the technical skills, you need to highlight your technical skills or the skills that you have. So we have the soft and the technical skills. Um, for a CV, very important to highlight your technical skills. Um, soft skills are not really a must for you to put because soft skills are, I think, what would be tested on an interview. Once you land the interview, then they can now, from your communication, from how you answer certain questions, your problem solving skills, all of those would come in the interview process. Uh, so yeah, the technical skills, uh, also with this, you need to look for familiar keywords or technologies that are relevant to your track. Um, so for example, project planning, you have Trello or Notion or Asana. If it's databases you're working with, um, 
you could do Oracle Access, MySQL, or Postgres, etc. So find your field, understand which platforms are very relevant to your track, and add it. If you feel like there's a very, um, there's a, if you feel like there's a tool or a platform that is mostly used in your skill and you have no idea how to do it, that could also be a chance for you to go learn more about it and also add it to your CV. Um, yeah. Another thing to have is the work experience and it should be relevant to the role that you're applying to. Um, so yeah, it should be very relevant to the role that you're applying to or it shows some certain skill sets that are necessary for your current role or the, yeah. So, yeah, so recruiters are mostly interested in your achievements as opposed to your job descriptions. So I don't know if we talked about it, but there is a way you are supposed to describe your roles or your achievements and um, yeah, your roles, achievements and work experience. And we have different types of, um, there are different types of methods that could help you properly structure um, your achievements. So you could have served at a certain company doing A, B, C, D, um, but that, that alone does not really qualify you. What would stand out more or what would be stronger is if you explain what value you brought to the company during that time. So um, let me just share certain skills. So is the... Mm. So one of the, yeah, let me just share this slide. So one of the ways or the formula that you can use on your resume to improve, to like describe your roles, skills and achievements or value that you added is using the XYZ formula. So with XYZ, it's basically, um, yeah, it's basically describing it as you accomplished this. So it could be, yeah, if you're doing probably, yeah, you accomplished this and how exactly can you measure what you accomplished? So it could be measured and then by doing this, so it could be if you're in sales or marketing, you could have done, you could say something like you, um, you, you made sales of maybe thousands. Uh, yeah, you made sales that could be measured by this and also uh, by doing this. But just to make it, yeah, just to make it short, remember the X, Y, Z. So this link is there on your challenge document if you want to read more on it. Um, if you look at, so for the whole goal of XYZ is for you to focus on accomplishments and not just your description or your role or your job description. So it quantifies your results. Um, we can look at examples here. So um, here's an, so this is an example of an okay way to describe your roles and responsibilities and then there's a better way and the best way. So. For example, if someone says you were a member of Leadership Tomorrow Society, that's okay. But if you want to make it better, you could add more details to it. So you were selected as one of the 275 in a 12-month professional development program for high achieving diverse talent. That stand out, stands out stronger than the first one. And then there's the last one, which is the best. Um, so you're selected as one of the 275 participants in for the 12 month professional development program for high achieving diverse talents based on leadership potential and academic success. Uh, so you see this one really highlights your value, your skills and why exactly you stood out in that position and why no one else could fill that position. Um, here's another example. You won second place in a hackathon. That's okay, but we don't know exactly what that hackathon was, what you did, um, how many people 
participated? Was it three? Was it 50? So a better way to say is we won second place out of 50 people in a hackathon. But the best way to say is to add more details um, to really make you sound stronger or come out stronger. So could be one second place out of 50 teams in hackathon at NJ Tech by working with two colleagues. And what exactly did you do? You developed an app that synchronizes mobile calendars. Um, yeah, so these are just examples, but the whole goal is for you to understand exactly when writing your work experience that you really need to show value and you really need to market yourself to stand out super strong as compared to other people. So instead of writing just your job descriptions, you could highlight your achievements better. And XYZ is one of the best, best one of the good formulas that you can use to highlight or improve your CV in a way. Uh, so it's always good to quantify your value, your achievements, um statistics are always good and just show the value that you did while working at a certain place um yeah the other thing is to have your educational background i'm not going to talk much about this because um you you're yeah you're all aware of this uh so it should be yeah it's irrelevant to include your high school or primary uh, just start from your undergraduate courses or diploma courses or the certificates that you've done um, and also when when writing when adding your cv if you've chosen a certain track you need to uh, add relevant coursework or trainings that you did on that so if it's a unit that you did in campus that you feel is needed in this job then feel free to add it um, yeah if you had good grades it's very good to add them if you didn't have good grades there's no need for you to add them there um but yeah and as always education is written in a reverse chronological order just as everything else on the cb um the other things that are optional but nice to have if you have licenses or certifications from either udemy coursera um ten academy or any other course uh, it's always good to add that. If possible, you can add a link to the certifications that you were given, and it should have all the details, so your name, the organization, and it should be signed by both uh, the awarding, the issuing organization, and also the date that you, yeah, the date that you earned, and maybe additional information. So it's always good to add your licenses and certifications other thing that you also need to add is your project so especially this is especially for those who haven't had a lot of work experience so it's good to add notable projects that you yourself are proud of um and a short description about it and also the other thing when also doing a project um how you structure how you structure your description of a project. If you can employ the XYZ formula again, uh, that will help you uh, describe your projects better uh, because you need to be concise straight to the point and show value of what you did on the project. Um, yeah. The other thing is to ensure that the formatting is perfect and consistent. So the styles, punctuations, the fonts, everything should be uh, equal. If it's font, use same color, same size, um, very neat, use bullets, and don't add a lot of information. So one to two pages is OK. If, if you don't have like, work experience, one is OK. If you have more work experience, um, Two is okay, and if you have like a lot of work experience, maybe three at most. So, um, so final checklist should have. Um, it's always advisable not to add your photo, but if you feel like you want to add your photo, it's still okay to have a photo. Um, your name that you have on your CV should be consistent to other platforms on CV or on, on LinkedIn or GitHub or any other place. 
to make it easy for this for the recruiter to recognize you on the CV and also on LinkedIn uh, if they want to have a look at them. Um, so all links should work. Uh, if you've added links to your certifications or links to your email or contact or links to your projects, they should all work. Um, it's good to always save your CV as a PDF and when naming it, um, put your both names and type on CV and it should be saved as a PDF. So avoid sending your CV as a .doc because it's going to change um it's it's formatting is going to change when it's maybe when it's opened in another in another software or laptop um ensure that you've preferred it no mistakes uh formatting is good um all your experience and skills are consistent in all on all platforms and also clearness and conciseness when you're describing your roles or experience and also remember to add the necessary keywords on the that are on the job posting um yeah so more details on more details are more more details are found on the challenge document so you can think of it as just like a guideline or yeah a guideline for you with checklists on uh what you need to have on your cv um are on the yeah on the challenge document so um yeah on the challenge document you have so we just want you to go through the cv through the whole document and um make sure that everything is there so your name your contact details your experience another thing aside from the xyz formula that you can use you can also use box law um yeah which is also sort of similar to the xyz formula so it's basically how do you make the experience that you had more than just a description or you did this or you did that uh instead just employing that xyz formula which is still um sort of referred to as a box law um so yeah you can have a you can have a read on that and yeah so all the information on how to structure is here your licensing and uh certifications if they're there and the skills so when delivering your deliverables should be to for you to review your current cv and make sure it has everything so make sure just just having like a checklist to ensure that the information is there, the links, um, your name, everything is well written. And once you, if you want to improve or if you feel like you've, you want to improve on your CV, um, here are more details for you to improve your CV. And for those who feel like, um, so we also have given you a template. Um, yeah, we've given you a template that you can make a copy of and it's a standard template that could help you structure your CV. So it has your name, uh, details, your professional summary. This is the 50 word summary that we talked about. Your skills and also your work experience and the projects and also your education. Um, yeah so if you feel like you need to you need a template that you could just edit feel free to use that if you feel content with the um with the if you feel content with the template that you have then that's also good yeah so how to when improving your content just go through the details that are here and make sure that you've checked out all the boxes here um yeah basically what to submit is a cv on your pd as a pdf um la, yeah as a pdf on connect uh that's basically it so for this week it's just going to be you looking at your series and improving them um yeah
does so also feel free to add the projects that you've done at an academy especially if you don't have any work experience um yeah they would they would be useful for you to show your experience or what you've done or what you've understood from uh leveraging ai for project management um yeah if anyone has any question and um, now is the time otherwise that is all for today's uh, work um so anyone has a question or should we call it okay. yes casa Hello, Margaret. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, maybe my question is, are we going to expect uh, submit this project? Uh, if so, when is the deadline? And uh, as you can see in the tech, uh, thanks uh, portal, only core portals are uh, put there. There is no any portal for this assignment. So, Will you add any other uh, another portal for this assignment? Uh, this is my question. Um, yes. So for the portal that will be added um, today, and also for the deadline, since we we assume or believe that you already have series, so it's just it's not a lot of work. So it's just you improving what you already have. And um, we have a graduation deadline, which is soon. So the deadline is tomorrow, but we want to make sure that um, we also get time to grade and, yeah, grade and give the results before the graduation date. So deadline okay. is tomorrow, yeah. Okay, I think you will notify us. Uh, maybe the other thing, Sorry, the other thing on the format of CV, uh, I think you miss uh, some subsections like the skill and references. Maybe shall we add by ourselves or let we let we drop them? Sorry, on the template. Yeah, the CV template is as we say experience, education uh background the slide that was oh yeah um and for the template it's, it's for you to yeah the template is just if you want a template that you can work with then you can use the one that we've provided um if you yeah if you if you if you already had created your cv with a different template or in a different document then there's no need it's it's really optional Okay. Um, anyone else? Yes, Casa. Sorry, I have finished already answer. Oh, okay. All right. Great. Um, so if no one else has a question, I'd like to Thank you um, all for being a part of this wonderful program. And I hope you've all learned one or two things. I hope you've improved your skills. I hope you're more inspired to go uh, build or work a lot on AI. And yeah, I wish you all the best as you advance in your careers. All the best and bye. Thanks for being here.